Hello, my name is Donnie Carpenter and I'm a software developer at MoneyTree Software. Today we're going to talk about behavior analysis within Silver Financial Planner. Behavior analysis, also known as WINIF, is a relatively new tool developed by MoneyTree Software to analyze when a client should retire, as well as what impact the real-world practice of varying spending in retirement based on how well the portfolio is doing can have on your client's retirement picture. Here we have John and Mary's sample already open. We're going to go into the behavior analysis section found over on the left under inputs and it will automatically calculate for us the first time that we go into here. This model allows us to randomize the rate of return and or the inflation rate. We do have to select at least one of these in order for the behavior analysis to run. On this page you'll see the introduction and quick start link. That's the best place to get started when learning behavior analysis after finishing this video. We also have some tooltips which will show up when you hover over a section, which serves to remind you the function of the different inputs. In addition to randomizing the rate of return and the inflation, you can allow for different retirement ages. This will help you determine when the client should retire, thus the name WINIF. To start, we see the graph Variable Spending versus Monte Carlo. We'll talk about this a little bit more in depth later, but this allows us to see the impact that allowing your client to vary their spending in retirement can have on their retirement picture. Let me begin to explain the model by pointing out the initial withdrawal rate limit, which is set to a default 4.5%. In our Monte Carlo, we will be comparing this limit to the amount of assets the client has at each of the projected retirement ages to see if it, they will be able to begin retirement. If they will be able to begin retirement, we will show that result on the retirement ages graph. In other words, the results here are showing us what percentage of time the client would be able to begin retirement without exceeding the initial withdrawal rate limit. After using the Monte Carlo engine to determine whether the client can retire at a particular age, we run the Monte Carlo engine two more times for each age when the client was able to begin retirement, once for the traditional Monte Carlo, once for the Monte Carlo with variable spending. We then show the results of the variable spending Monte Carlo on the retirement success graph, as well as the combined results on the variable spending versus Monte Carlo graph, which we saw when we first ran the analysis. In order to explain variable spending, let's go to the variable spending graph. You will see here an orange line, which is the desired spending level. Now in this case, it's a roughly straight line going up with inflation. What you should note here is that this is expenses less any incomes that are offsetting the expenses. So this line may not just be a straight line. It may start off higher and drop down, uh, depending on when their social securities are starting, when pensions are starting. Uh, they may start lower and, and come up if... Uh, for instance, one spouse is working longer than the other. The next line to note here is the blue dotted line. That is our withdrawal rate spending limit. Now it starts in this case at 4.5% and it ends at 10%. It's going to grow in a straight line between now and then. Now we do not show on this graph what the actual assets are projected to be. However, you can figure out what those asset levels are roughly by looking at the graph simply because four and a half percent of the assets comes out to be a little under a hundred thousand dollars in that first year and ten percent of the assets comes out to be um, maybe around uh, twenty five thousand in the last year in this particular chart the green area is our variable spending budget floor in this case, it's 90%, and that's the default for the program. What that says is that we're not going to spend less than 90% of our desired budget level unless we run out of money. You'll notice that the black diamond line, which is the estimated spending level, is following that green line after the withdrawal rate limit is well below the budget that we'd like to be able to spend. In addition to a budget floor, we also have two ceilings. The reason that we have two ceilings is to protect the client from overspending in their early retirement. The first ceiling is fairly simple, and that's what I like to call the hard ceiling. That's the 125%. The way that this ceiling works, if we say that our desired budget is $100,000, 125% of $100,000 is $125,000. 
So if our withdrawal rate limit said that we could spend more than $125,000, the ceiling is going to then limit us to $125,000. Now let's say that the withdrawal rate limit says that we can spend $150,000 exactly. Uh, that's 4.5% of our assets. Well, that first ceiling is going to say we can only spend $125,000. But then we do a second ceiling, which is uh, more of a soft ceiling, but can adjust to be higher or lower than that hard ceiling. With the soft ceiling, what we do is we look at 25% in this example of the difference between the withdrawal rate limit and our desired budget. So in this case, we're looking at $150,000 versus $100,000. 25% of that $50,000 difference is $12,500. And so that ceiling is $112,500. In this case, we would take the lower ceiling, which is $112,500, and say that that is our actual spending limit for that year. One important note about the variable spending graphs, these are one line out of the thousands of Monte Carlo simulations. Each time that we hit recalculate, we're going to get a different line for this graph. This chart is intended for educational purposes, not as an example of what will happen to the client's portfolio over time. It's a great way to illustrate how ver the variable spending model works. You'll notice we also have each of the ages that we are modeling for retirement up here on the left, so that we can see what that might look like at different ages. This is particularly important if the clients are going to be retiring um, either before or after Social Security starts. You can show the difference that that can make on what their budget is supposed to be. This all comes back to the variable spending versus Monte Carlo. Most of the time you will see that the variable spending works out to have a better retirement picture than the traditional Monte Carlo. The reason for that is that variable spending allows you to spend less than your budget in the years your assets are not doing as well as you had hoped. We can adjust things like the budget floor and the budget ceiling, and we will see differences in this variable spending versus Monte Carlo. For instance, if we lower the budget floor, we can almost indefinitely increase the success of our variable spending. We can also increase the ceilings, which will decrease the success rate of our variable spending model. This has been a brief overview of behavior analysis in Silver Financial Planner. I hope you have enjoyed learning about this innovative new tool available through MoneyTree software. Please feel free to contact us if you would like more information about this or any of the other tools that MoneyTree software provides.